Hello and welcome to the video by Trump Excel. I'm Sumit Bansal and in this video I'm going to show you how to fetch the file names from a folder based on a drop down selection. So here I have these folder names sales data 2016, 17 and 18 and within each of these folders I have these files East data 2016 and North data 2016. So these are year wise data for these regions and what I want to do is when in my Excel workbook I have these file these folder names here and I want to create a drop down list and based on the drop down list I want to fetch the file names. So I want this to be dynamic so that as soon as I change the selection I get the file names updated. So I get the new file names based on the selection. So the first thing I need to do is I need to create that drop down. So let me first create the drop down here. So in this cell A2 I would do this. This would be my header or uh, something that tells the user what this cell is about. And here I would go to data, click on data validation. I would select list and in source I would click on this and select my data source here which is this. And now when I click OK, it gives me these drop down values. Now I would convert this into an Excel table first so that I can open this data in Power Query and then I would ask Power Query to fetch this value to get me the file name. So let me first go to insert and convert this into a table. Make sure you select my table has headers because it does. And when I click OK, I have this table here and I can change the selection. I can make a selection here. Also, let me rename this to folder name. Now, let's open this table, this small two cell table in Power Query. So I would go to data from table range. And now here, what I want is I want Power Query to give me the value that is there in this cell and I want Power Query to give this to me dynamically. So in this case, it says sales data 2017. But when I change this, I want Power Query to give me the new value, the new selection. So I would right click on this, go to drill down and Power Query gives me this text string based on the cell value. So all I need is this. I would come to file, close and load to and I would save this as a connection. So it opens the import data uh, dialog box here and I would go to only create connection and click OK. So you can see this saves a query with uh, this saves the connection folder name and you can see ABC here which means that this is returning a text string. Now the second step is to fetch the data from a folder using Power Query. So I would go to data, get data from file from folder and here I would specify the folder path so I would come here select any of these folders click OK this would open the preview window where I see the file details so I would click on edit you can load this if you want but I only want the file names I don't want the entire metadata here along with content and extension and everything so I would right click on this click on remove other columns and I only want this data so I would come here clo close and load to and here I would say existing worksheet in C3 because I want the data here only I don't want it to be inserted in a new worksheet so now when I click OK it inserts the data but as of now these two queries are two different queries this is one different query and this is one different connection what I want is these to be connected so that when I make a change here, this should get updated. So if I make a change here, this is not getting updated because these two are not connected. Let me first rename this query sales data 2016. Let's rename this to sales data. And now what I need to do is I need to connect these two queries. So I would open sales data and remember the name of this connection is folder name. So we are going to use this. I open sales data. Now here I go to the view tab and I click the advanced editor because I'm going to change the M code a little bit. Now here you can see the source folder dot files and the value is hard coded and I can change this hard coded value. So I would remove this sales data 2016, add an ampersand here and use the name of the connection that is giving me the file name with the folder name 
based on the drop down selection so now when i click on done see what happens i get an error and this is a formula firewall error and this happens when you try to reference multiple queries so in this case i have two queries and one query is trying to reference the other query and there are multiple reasons for why this is happening uh, and there are a couple of ways you can get rid of this so the first way to get rid of this is change the privacy settings so if you want to do that you come to file here go to options and settings and click on query options and in this case you can change the privacy settings so in this case it says combine data according to your privacy level setting you make this change and you change this to ignore the privacy levels and click on ok and when you do this you go to home now refresh this query and it gives you the result so changing the privacy setting would not give you the formula dot firewall error but in it may compromise your privacy settings a little because you are selecting the one that is not recommended let me first show you if this is working or not so i would click on i would close this query i would keep the data and let's see if this is working i make i'll make the change here i select to sales data 2016 I go to data, I refresh all, and this is working. So now I have made this dynamic. These two queries are connected and they're working. But if you don't want to make the privacy change, then you need to do something more with the M code. So let me first do this. Let me open the folder name query, the one that is giving me this folder name. I would go to view, advanced editor, and I would copy the code. And what I'm going to do here is, I'm going to combine these two queries using the M code so that I don't need this query. And when I have all these M code in one single query, then there is no error because the query is not referencing any other query. Everything is within the same query. So now when I come to sales data, let me first go to file and change the privacy setting back to the one that is recommended which is combined data according to the privacy level setting for each source and now when i click ok and i come here and refresh you can see i am getting this formula dot firewall query which is what i expected now i would go to view in advanced editor i have this code and this is the code that is giving me the files from the folder so it fetches the data from here and it gives and it removes the other columns except the column that has the file name let me paste my query data the query uh, m code that i copied from folder name query here now there are a couple of things you need to change in this m code because you have see multi uh, you have duplication of step name which cannot be the case you cannot have two steps with the same name and there are a couple of other things here in the bottom of the query, uh, this advanced editor, this is going to help you. So you can keep on checking this and you need to make sure that there is a green tick here. So the first thing is the comma is expected because this is not the last line now. So I need to add a comma here. Only the last line should not have a comma. Every other line in the M code needs to have a comma. Now it says the variable name source is already defined in this scope. So I cannot use source name here. I need to change at least one of these. Let me change this one and let me call this F name for folder name. And also, as we know that in M code, the next step references the previous step. So this step was source and this step was reference, referencing the previous step by using source here. So I need to change F name here. I need to replace source with F name so that it knows that this is the query it needs to ref this is the step it needs to reference to this is the previous step and now in this case you can see this is folder name this is the name of the query that we were using but now in this case the previous step is what is giving us the name because this is the part of the query the query from folder name that is giving us the folder name here which was sales data 2016 or sales data 2017 based on the selection so in this case, I'm going to copy this step here and I'm going to replace folder name with this step. So what I'm going to do is in this step, it was referencing the query, the query with the name folder name. But now it's not referencing any external query. Everything is here itself. And you can see it says no syntax errors have been detected. Now when I click on done, 
you can see it gives me the result and now I can close this I can keep this and now when I come here change this to 2018 folder name come here and refresh this you can see it works and everything is now in this single query which means I don't even need this query even if I delete this go back here change this and refresh it it would still work because now everything is in the single query now the last thing I want to show you in this video is how to make this dynamic so in this case I'm selecting something but I need to go back to refresh all if I don't want to do this I can make this dynamic so in this case the query name is sales data and we are, and we are going to use this query name in the VB code that we are going to write so what I'm going to do is go to the developer tab and click on visual basic and here this is the sheet which is the, which has the name data I need to add a single line of code in this sheets code so that whenever there is any change in this cell it would automatically refresh this query so I would come here select worksheet and here I would select change and let me remove this part and here I would simply write one single line of code and I would check uh, this for the condition whether this is the cell is A2 or not because I don't want the, uh, the, the query to update whenever there is any change I want the query to update only when there is a change in cell A2 so I come here and I check if target dot row is equal to two and target dot column is equal to one which means that if the row is two and the column is one which would mean that it refers to cell a2 then and here let me type end if and here I would write the, the code that would refresh this query which would be active workbook dot connections and within double quotes here I need to specify the name of the query within double quotes but I need to uh, also mention a prefix here so the prefix here is query space hyphen space or you always need to specify this and only when you have this it would refer to the query that you mentioned here and the name of the query is sales data and now finally I would say refresh this and let me close the VB editor and now when I come here and I change this you can see this automatically refreshes the data because now this is using the VB code VB code identifies that there is a change in this and it refreshes the data so in this video uh, you've learned how you can get the file names from a folder using a drop down so you have made this dynamic then you've learned how to avoid the formula dot firewall error and you have seen how to make the refresh refreshing the query part dynamic by using a VB code so that the VB code identifies whether there is a change in the cell and based on it it refreshes the query that's it in this video. I hope you found this useful. Thank you and have a nice day.